Hey everyone, Daniel here from Twin Bytes with another quick tutorial for you. This time I was asked by Drums about creating a tutorial on how to create a Linux virtual box. So based on one of my other videos I've had in the past, I showed how to create a virtual box with the Windows operating system. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Linux operating system. So stick around. So first off, in this video, I'm only gonna be showing you how to install the Linux virtual machine. So you need to have the VirtualBox software already installed. And if you don't have that or need help with that, you might wanna check out this other video that I did. And it shows you in the first part how to create the VirtualBox and install it. And then it gets into installing Windows virtual machine on that. So. If you need to look at that video first and then you can come back to this one and then see how to install Linux. So let's jump right in and get Linux installed. So picking up from my last video, we've got Windows 10 installed in here already in this virtual box manager. So we want to create a new virtual machine. And the default settings is picking up uh, Windows and our default location where it's being stored. So what I, I didn't mention in the last video doing Windows is see how this information automatically changes as I type in the name. So the name I'm gonna put in Linux, it's changed it to Linux, and I'm gonna call it Ubuntu, and now you can see it's changed it once again, so it knows the type is Linux and the version of Linux specifically is going to be Ubuntu. So I'll go in next, we're able to set our memory size, so you can put whatever you want. The default is to create a virtual hard disk now, and I'm gonna do that. And the default on here is the virtual disk image, so we're gonna stick with that default is fine. And dynamically allocated, and that will allow you to uh, make the best of the space on your hard drive. So depending on how much space you have, um, it, uh, I would say stick with the dynamic. So we can go next. You can have your minimum size for the drive. It's set to 10 gigs, and that should be good enough for now. It depends on what you're gonna be doing with this. So we have our basic system set up. Now one thing I forgot to mention when setting up the Windows 10 Pro was once this part's done, it's only done the bare minimum. If we go with that highlighted, we'll go into settings. Under system, we wanna go over to the processor because you see the memory, we already set that up and uh, we also want to change the boot order so we could do that later if we want but at first the hard drive's empty so it's going to check the floppy which we don't have and the optical where we're going to be booting from to get the ISO file but the most important thing right now is the processor it's only running on one core that's really horrible so we'll crank that up to at least four cores so it'll be a a little more responsive. Uh, if you go into the red area here, it's going to uh, put a lot heavier load on your system because you're already using so many cores of processing power to get just running this virtual box manager. And then running the operating system inside of that is going to be taking some of that uh, power away. So have something reasonable that's going to give you enough speed but not hurt you in other areas especially if you have multiple programs open at the same time and remembering to either now or afterwards change the boot order so it's not going to constantly be booting from the optical drive and that's going to make a slower boot up process each time you turn on this virtual machine so with that we'll hit ok and now it's ready to start so we'll start this to boot up this virtual machine and of course, because the drive is empty, just like a, an actual computer, we're booting it up, but there's nothing on it yet, so it can't 
boot it doesn't know what to boot from so if we look in the drop down menu we can see what we've already got installed from previous I want to go into add a virtual or add a ISO image and I'll go to add to add the disk I'm gonna find my ISO image that I downloaded earlier and you can download any flavor of Linux that you want so it doesn't have to be Ubuntu that's what I'm using in this video but of course you could use any other version it'll be the same process I'll open that and we'll choose it so it's in the list here and then we'll start the virtual machine using that ISO image so it's basically like it's booting from a CD or a USB stick with that ISO image on it and at this point it's just running through the installation so it's the same as if you were installing it on a local computer so we just gotta run through this installation process and wait for it to finish so I'm gonna speed through this for you and we'll reconnect when it's done and now we're just at the beginning stages of being able to install it so you could also just like if you were using a disk you could just try Ubuntu and it loads the operating system for you to try it but we want to install it so of course choose your language first and go to install Ubuntu you've got your keyboard layout which should be correct by default we'll continue and you have the choice of choosing what apps you want to install right from the beginning so it'll have the web browser utilities office software games media player some basic stuff like that uh, or just minimal depending on what you want to use this for you can also have it download the updates right away while installing the Ubuntu operating system so that way it'll save you some time from having to do it afterwards I'm gonna uncheck that just to speed up the process here you don't have to check to install third-party software so we'll leave that you're gonna get the drivers so it's not like your Wi-Fi won't work uh, or the graphics won't be correct this is just installing other third-party software which is different from the drivers so you can probably ignore that safely and continue you can always install this later if necessary we'll continue and then you're warned about erasing the disk to install which is what we want because it's fresh leave the default just to get a basic install working and now it's just confirming how it's going to be installed where it's going to go the formatting that's all fine now of course you have to choose your location so as long as it's correct you can hit continue and then finally put in your name and you are going to want to put a password and get that all set up and require a password to log in or you can have it set to log you in automatically if you want so it depends again how you want this set up I'm going to have it prompt me for the password now the installation is complete it tells us we have to restart the computer to complete the installation so we'll hit restart now and of course it says remove the installation medium press enter well you can't really do that on a virtual box so we'll just press enter and since we changed the boot order already in the beginning to boot from the hard drive before the the virtual CD drive for the ISO image it's like the images or the disk is removed as they requested so it's just booting straight from the virtual hard drive and now we're booted up into our new operating system so I'll click on my username and enter in my very complex password and now we're into our new 
Linux virtual machine. So it gives you some prompt here to connect your online accounts. You don't have to, you can hit skip. Uh, doing the patching, of course keeping the computer secure with all the updates and that. It's good to uh, get that going. So you could set that up and maybe we'll skip it for now. And it's also asking about uh, helping with improvements. So yeah, it's it's a good idea to do that and help keep it free. But if you don't want to, you can say you don't want to. I'm going to leave it on. And location services, again, for privacy, it's up to you. It helps with some other things. Depending on what you're going to be doing with this machine, you may need to have it turned on, but you can leave it off for privacy. And then it tells you other apps that it's prompting you you might want to download and install. So we'll just hit done. And now we're ready to use the machine. Go into the search and type in update and there's two in here. One is the live update and the other one should be your standard updates and that will launch like this checking for updates. It will prompt you that there's updates available if there are and if you want to install them now or remind me later. I'm going to say remind me later just so that we can finish this video and we want to shut down this machine and see it start so if you watch the other video you would have seen that there's a couple ways of doing it you can do it within the operating system itself or just xing out and asking it to do it but i find it easy to use the operating system just as though it was an actual machine so we'll just power off that computer and it closes that window and we're back over here and we can see the machine ready to go so you can switch between multiple operating systems, whichever one that you want to boot from, and just go to start. And that basically turns on that virtual computer. And that's all there is to installing a Linux virtual machine. So if you found the video helpful, please do hit the like button, consider subscribing, and ring the bell to be notified every time I come out with a new video, premiere, or live stream. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. How to create a tutorial or created a virtual box machine. Every time I come up with a new video, live stream, or what the hell is it that I've got? Every time I come up with a new video, oh my.